And now it is my honor and distinct privilege to introduce my colleague, Frank Clegg. Um, <clears throat> Frank ha has had a distinguished career as a telecommunications uh, expert himself. Um, he worked and became the president of Microsoft Canada and worked uh, throughout a number of positions in that uh, important company, and now is the founder of Canadians for Safer Technology and uh, also chairman of the Business Advisory Group of Environmental Health Trust. So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Frank Clegg, who will speak with us now about what this means for Canada and the world and uh, what his thoughts are about this important court decision. Well, thank you, Deborah, and I thank you for the invitation to join this very distinguished panel. Um, given the rapid increase in the use of wireless devices and their continuous expansion and capability, it's difficult for government regulators to keep up with the technology, let alone regulate it. I believe the time has come when we should follow the examples in the pharmaceutical, chemical, and transportation industries where the companies who benefit from bringing their products to market are responsible to prove their products are safe. I believe the technology and telecommunications industry's free ride must end, where all they have to do is say that they meet federal guidelines. In fact, studies show that two thirds of consumers hold their cell phones against their bodies, which in fact break federal guidelines. Now, there is going to be an outpouring from my industry about how this cannot be done, how expensive it will be, and how unrealistic. Then, based on experience, industry will get to work, and I believe will provide wireless products that are both safe and effective, in a lot of cases, even cheaper. I've been in the technology industry for over 40 years. As Dr. Davis outlined, I have my most recent position I retired as president of Microsoft Canada, and I've seen the tremendous benefits technology can provide. I've also seen the potential harm if technology is not implemented correctly. And I believe that our current implementation and use of wireless devices is not safe. That's why I co-founded the Canadians for Safe Technology in 2012, and I joined the Environmental Health Trust as their chairman of their business advisory group. Now, this landmark decision has implications for the entire world that relies on the FCC as a beacon of advice. The ruling reveals that current out, outdated FCC limits do not rest on thorough review of all the relevant scientific evidence. This decision clearly shows that the assumptions that all parents make that devices reflect the best and the latest science is, are actually not warranted. Most of the public, including me before 2010 and 11, assumes that the safety limits for these billions of wireless devices are based on a robust review of all relevant research. Clearly in this decision, the court states that the FCC failed to show that it had taken seriously a wide range of evidence, including damage to sperm, impacts on the brain, and stress to wildlife and our environment. Sadly, the FCC, which sets the policies that affect the entire planet, chose to ignore this evidence and did not even provide a record of reviewing published studies, such as the one carried out by the Yale chairman of obstetrics and gynecology, Professor Taylor. As Dr. Taylor just indicated, not only is there extensive animal research showing negative impacts on pregnancy and the behavior of exposed offspring, but there's growing evidence that such effects are found in children when and where we have been able to look for them. This failure to, lead, to use the latest science and setting standards in this case is not only in the US, but unfortunately in Canada as well. Canada has safety limits from Health Canada Safety Code 6 that rest on outdated assumptions regarding adult exposures and do not into take into account the millions of young children using phones and tablets. Similar to the FCC, Health Canada safety limits cling to the 100-year-old assumption that tissue must be heated to be harmed. This has been disproven by hundreds of high-quality, peer-reviewed, published studies. Now 5G is being rolled out. Contrary to the assertion that 5G will be harmless because the skin 
provides a protective barrier, the fact is that 5G will use a wide range of frequencies. This includes the lower frequencies used by 2G and 3G found to cause cancer by the aforementioned National Toxicology Program. These, pen these frequencies can also penetrate deeply into the brain. In addition, 5G can also use higher frequency millimeter waves, which are absorbed in the skin. Some of the frequencies used by 5G are used by the US and Israeli military for crowd control, their active denial systems. Furthermore, the explosion of smart devices also requires the more dense 4G LTE networks resulting in ever increasing public exposure to a panoply of RFR frequencies. Some models that we've seen show a small cell antenna every 100 yards in a dense population area. When Health Canada did their last review in 2015, although Dr. Davis and other experts from around the world participated, we found that over 100 studies were ignored that showed harm well below North America's current guidelines. We have a suspend 5G Canada appeal that has been signed by over 20,000 Canadians that asks precisely what the court is ordering. Take a good look at the science. This is about our children's future. Do not be lulled into believing that 25 year old standards can protect the youngest and most vulnerable. They simply cannot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Clegg.